Hello and welcome to not the final video of this project. A lot of people have requested that I talk in these videos and it happens that a DVD style commentary would help connect all the random things being shown this time. I'll also be answering questions I was foolish enough to solicit on Discord, so if you've been wanting texture updates lately, buckle up, motherfucker. The textures in these areas were severely glitched until recently, so now that they work I went back to finish them before doing the moon. Right away you'll probably notice that the door is different. Which brings me to the first few questions about how I'm deciding when to use the 3D designs and how I'm keeping the art style intact. The original door had a metallic look with bolts and plate seams which didn't seem right for a Deku area, so I went with the more elaborate stone door from the 3DS. I'm mainly just choosing whichever design looks cooler and mixing and matching the best textures from each game. The 3D version was drawn to stay faithful to its original design, but the 64 version had to be changed to match the grey walls of the old maze. A palette swap is usually all it takes to keep things from looking out of place. The remake is drawing from the same source material I am, so the designs usually fit in. The textures here are pretty detailed for an area so poorly lit and with so little time to look around, so I'm showing the actual files themselves. There's another difficulty nerf here where the walls of flame were replaced with metal spikes in the remake and I forgot to complain about it, so I'm doing that now. There are a few more 3D inspired designs like the dead end wall and the pattern in the final room. In this case I drew from the 3D wall because the original texture was vague and didn't show up very well. And that's all 30 seconds of this area. Before going on to the next, I wanted to show the first draft of Link's model edit. Skylar's art has done a lot of cool 64 versions of later Link models and he's managed to improve the texture mapping for young Link. The shoulder strap pockets resemble the art more and don't have the same ugly stretching, and the boots aren't mirrored which means I can split the cuff in the front. Before, the split would show up on the back of the boot as well, which looked stupid. The shield is also one solid piece which eliminates the glitched seam the original suffered from. All pieces of clothing are also using separate textures now so I can add a few more details like a faint hat seam. The model itself is still mostly untouched and has a few vertex problems but it should be possible to make more improvements on the next draft. There is a hard limit on the file size though and that prevented Skylar from being able to import the 3D model without simplifying it, so don't expect a 1 million try PS5 mesh. That's not to say bigger swaps won't be possible later since a native Windows port could be a very real possibility. You may have read about for getting a native version, which opens the door for just about anything. You could play as y or y or even The same could be possible with Majora's Mask along with things like 60 frames per second and more. Just be sure to buy the game before partaking in any of this. Yes, I know that requires touching a Wii U. I complain a lot about the remake but I mostly like the way it looks when it's not over brightened, but the 3D fortress is disappointing since the textures simplify most of the detail into just boring arrows and lines. There's also a lot of HOLY HELL THAT'S LAVA! So almost everything here is based on the 64 aside from the door, which I always saw as a boot with a weird banana knife coming out of it instead of an arm. The remake design is clearer but looked too cartoonish to me so I compromised between them. If you don't like it, fire off your critiques now. One of the most common criticisms I get is that everything looks the same, which is actually a compliment to me since it means the textures are faithful. But for those folks who can't see the difference, here's what happens when you get up close. Another common complaint is that it doesn't make sense to put high-res textures on low-poly objects, which is valid. But I could also argue that the simpler geometry makes the texture detail far more vital and gives a lot more power to change how things look than in modern games. The main goal isn't really to make the graphics look new but to make the designs in the original art clear to see, and figuring out what everything is supposed to look like is a really fun process. I am using the path tracing shader to shine things up though and it's another thing that people are split on. You can see the impact of it pretty clearly here. The newer versions can actually cast hard shadows, making it far more precise than screen space AO alone. I think it suits the darkness of the game and a lot of my textures try to bake in similar effects when possible anyway. And now we'll take another detour to talk about the new Redux patch. Some people asked if control changes were possible and yes. This patch does that by adding the same shortcuts as the 3DS restoration mod. The masks in Ocarina are on the D-pad and the arrow types can be cycled while aiming along with a few other smaller tweaks. The downside to this is that there's now a patch for widescreen, a patch for the Redux mod, and eventually a patch for the Link model edit, which may not all work together at once. The worst case scenario is that you'll have to choose the one that matters most to you, unless a mega patch comes along with everything put together. Iconic Canyon has by far the most areas and I still haven't shown all of them yet. The shrine is very simple and only has a few textures, one of which is again based on the 3D design since the 64 was vague gibberish. One of the questions that came up a lot was which texture or area was my favorite and I'm still happy with these bubbles. 
The old-fashioned machinery and lights in the Great Bay Temple made it the most fun overall area to draw so far. It also happens to be the best showcase for the path tracing shader to turn textures into functioning lights. The Graves have had a lot of problems with not only the textures but the Lens of Truth malfunctioning and Glide N64 has come a long way to getting all of it to work. The gravestone carvings didn't seem to mean anything so I replaced it with the 3DS text and baked in a shadow for it. The notes on the plaque for the Song of Storms also didn't match up so I made them resemble the actual song. This wall is another example of how the texture provides absolutely all of the detail, so hopefully the depth is more convincing now. It's interesting when textures like this come up since they're not just for looks but have a gameplay function. I've tried to keep the cracks clear enough to signal that it's bombable without making it look exaggerated. The last area this time is Dompe's basement, which is another mix of 64 and 3D textures. The floor here looked strangely flat as if it were polished marble, so I drew the texture off of the 3D version. The elevators looked pretty generic, so I swapped them with a monochrome version of my 3D texture as well. The sunstones were badly stretched and the 3D design happened to fit on them perfectly, so they also got switched. The stairwell didn't really have convincing depth, so I used a palette swapped version of my 3D texture. In the 3D pack, I did keep the 64 tile design since I found it more interesting than the default one. This is a good time to point out the weird effect that 3D textures have under light, where every highlight on the texture is blown out when passing over. I assume this was done to simulate the look of normal maps catching light and it may have worked better on a small screen, but it's not that great in HD. And with that stuff out of the way, here are the rest of the questions that people had. The most difficult part of the mod by far was doing the skyboxes, which apparently look like this in the ROM, but get split into 93 separate pieces by the emulator. The only way to assemble them is to print each texture name on with a batch edit and then look at the sky to see which piece goes where like a jigsaw puzzle. The top portion of the skybox needs to be rotated around to be made seamless on all four sides, and once the boxes are finally done, all 93 pieces need to be cropped and exported one by one. But first, they need to be overlapped with the adjacent pieces since the emulator apparently blends them by a certain number of pixels, and failing to overlap them will result in a sky full of seams. For comparison, the 3DS skybox is one goddamn texture. That's it. Anuma! Zanyboy asks if I snuck any secrets into the game. Yes. I'm honestly not sure how many textures there are total, but it seems to be over five and a half thousand. The 3D version apparently has seven and a half thousand. The HD textures are typically around 2048 by 2048, with characters and objects usually around 512 by 512. The bomber portraits were mostly cut down from the official art, but some characters have no art. For the Gorman Brothers, I was able to use Engo's art from Ocarina of Time with some shadowing added to try to match the Majora art style. The rest, like Grog, had to be drawn from scratch. Although I did use Breath of the Wild's soldier suit as a starting point for Shiro. A few of these could probably be better. The bomb lady looks like Snoke. Another thing that comes up a lot is whether I'll do Ocarina of Time as well, and the answer is no. No, 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 no. The game was rougher and didn't have the expansion pack, and so the textures are even harder to work with. There are seven skyboxes and many pre-rendered backdrops that are about as hard to replace. And I just prefer the 3D version too much to have any passion for redoing the original. A lot of my textures are being ported over for the Dolphin Community Pack, though. I'm working on the ending now, and then we'll do one last pass to fix some things up, because this looks like shit. And this. And this, there's just a bunch of shit everywhere. I didn't even have a drawing tablet when starting and wasn't confident enough to draw anything by hand, so a lot of Clock Town is done with photos. The characters and enemies are also only partially done, but these things can be replaced very quickly, so the next update will be the very last one. If you've made it this far, then thank you for your interest and your feedback. Just remember to buy the game in whatever form you can, and shh, shut up, everybody. Just shut up. Stupid. Yahoo. I'm not coming for my princess. Whoa, Yahoo. Yahoo. Here we go. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. So long, gay bozer. So long, gay bozer. Wahahahahua. I am a come in for my princess. I am a tired. I am a tired. I am a tired.